Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com and in this video we're going to be comparing Stable Diffusion 3 with Stable Cascade. Now Stable Diffusion 3 came out in early preview just a couple of days ago and Stability AI in their release gave us some prompts and some images that allows us to compare the artwork from Stable Diffusion 3 with Stable Cascade. Now in the release, which they say is for the early preview version of Stable Diffusion 3, they say it is their most capable text to image model. And they also say it greatly improves performance in multi subject prompts, image quality and spelling abilities. Now there's quite a lot of details here about how everything is coming together. But the main thing to take away is that the new version uses a diffusion transformer architecture. And I'm sure that means something to some folk out there and flow matching. Now, from what I've been able to find out, this will greatly improve the, well, let's say it can potentially improve the accuracy of images and the diffusion transformer architecture. This is apparently similar to what is found in DALI 2. And I think it may be similar to DALI 3 as well. Now they say they're going to publish a detailed technical report soon, but for, for the time being, we just have the preview. And we've also got some stuff over on Twitter or X, whatever they're calling it nowadays. We've got the wizard charming up Stable Diffusion 3 in fantastic text. We've got a go big or go home image, which as you can see there's got some nice bokeh going on in the background. And we also have this painting style. Dali is, is it Dali? Uh, no, not Dali-esque. This is Dadaist. This is weird, bizarre, surreal painting style of an image. And then we've got a chameleon. So we can actually copy because we've got the prompts in all these cases. We can just see how well it performs or with those prompts inside of stable cascade. And that uses a different architecture from SDXL and from stable diffusion three. And we might also have a bit of a look into Dali three as well, a little bit later. Now, before we jump into all of that quick reminder that I've got some courses over on Udemy for Stable Diffusion, SDXL, and, and also Comfy UI. We've also got some uh, stuff for GIMP and with the coming new version of GIMP, I might actually put one of those uh, available for free. There's currently a free course for Stable Diffusion. If you want to take a look at that, that's for absolute beginners. And we've also got something starting up for Stable Cascade. I'll have a link to all of this in the description if you want to learn a little bit more about what we're talking about here. We've got a an image which is really trying to put together a number of things. We've got a, a scene, we've got a style, we've got the wizard, we've got the text that he's conjuring up, and we've got a relationship between all of these three things. So hopefully we can actually replicate this inside of Cascade. Now, just to be absolutely co complete disclosure, I used 10 samples from st from Stable Cascade and chose the best one. I assume that the images on Twitter are also cherry picked. So I decided to cherry pick the Stable Cascade one. Now, what you're seeing here is the actual image in its comparative resolution. So that was the Stable Diffusion 3 one. This is the Stable Cascade and a number of them. We actually got the text correct, which is awesome. However, there are a number of artifacts as well that you can see. If I just zoom in, you can see it looks fantastic. The colors, the text, the landscape. I think it looks fantastic and I really like the aesthetic. Now, one omission is that we don't have a three anywhere in this particular image. And of course, we got the three over there and we don't have the exact relationship between the wizard and the text here in the original. The wizard, you can see he's standing there. His arms are casting out and he's got the sparks happening. He's casting a spell. With this one, it's a little bit more, the relationship is not so clear. What I decided to do, because I know quite a bit now about the, the way that Stable Cascade uses prompts. It's a little bit different from Stable Diffusion. I decided to tailor some prompts for Stable Cascade and this is the tailored one where we're using a different prompt 
and you can see it gets the entire text stable diffusion 3 i tried to make the wizard cast the text it didn't quite work but it's a very large image this is the actual actual size of the image it's not enlarged at all the next image is go big or go home this is on the background in bokeh in blurry text and we've got the apple in the foreground when we go into stable cascade it typically put go big or go home on the apple rather than on the blackboard i do think to some extent the aesthetics of this photograph is supposed to be a cinematic i think the aesthetics of this photograph are better than the aesthetics of the uh, stable diffusion 3 but obviously it didn't position the text correctly and that's maybe something that's coming from the uh, transformer inside of stable diffusion 3 or maybe the flow matching that they use uh, overall i like the the appearance of this image here and if it could be placed accurately on the blackboard that would be cool now i did again do a specific prompt that i thought would work for stable cascade and we got this result here. Again, the aesthetics are fantastic. We've got a couple of apples for whatever reason, and the text is go big, go oh home. So almost, but the bokeh, the overall appearance, the size and scale, it's, it is fantastic. It just doesn't get the text correct when you're dealing with this amount of text. So you gotta be careful with the prompting inside of Cascade. This is the pig. <laughs> The, the bird, the painting. Uh, it looks like a painting. It looks like, an it looks like a surreal painting. And we've got the, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of confusion as to whether the tutu is on the pig or whether it's on the astronaut. And this is Stable Cascade. Now, Stable is on the umbrella. <laughs> and uh, the pig has a couple of tails. Um, this was the best out of 10, so there's no bird. Some of them, it did have birds, but none of them were wearing the, the top hat. So not quite as accurate as Stable Diffusion 3. And then the chameleon, uh, let's just zoom in there. You can see a chameleon in the studio. Now the colors are fantastic. Everything looks nice and vibrant. Uh, it looks like a photograph. It's got the sort of photographic blur going on. We don't have certain things I would expect to find. For instance, we don't have a focus on the eyes, which I would expect to find in a studio photo. Uh, we don't have quite the amount of, there's not quite the amount of um, maybe detail that I would expect. The colors are fine. The colors are good. And this is Stable Cascade. Um, I suddenly realized when I was doing this, I didn't don't know what the, the feet of chameleons look like, but <laughs> there we have this one here. And the image looks fantastic. Uh, it looks like a chameleon, and I think the color's a little bit more muted. That was consistently the case with the Stable Cascade ones. Now, Dali 3 is a little bit different. It uses the same kind of architecture as I think they're talking about inside of Stable Diffusion 3. Now, the first thing to note here is that the image is small, but you can do much larger images inside of Dali 3. You can only do one image at a time, so I gave it one chance, whereas with Stable Cascade, you can just tell it to do 10 images in a go and it will do 10. With this one, it creates its own prompt. So this is created using the ChatGPT4 prompt, giving it the original prompt from, uh, from Stable Diffusion 3. And the results, not bad. We've got text that <laughs> <laughs> that is unusable. It's uh, Disfession 3. Uh, but the overall relationship, the colors, it looks like something that you might find in an anime. I do like the lighting, especially on the back of the cloak of the wizard. Go big or go home. The text is correct. It's in the background on the blackboard. The image just looks horrible. And it actually gave me two images, which is good for, uh, for Dali 3. <laughs> I don't know, there's there's no complaint, but it doesn't look like a cinematic photograph. And the pig and the astronaut, this one looks awesome. Um, it looks like a painting and you can see the relationship between the different elements. It handles everything very well. The text at the bottom is confusing. It's not quite accurate, but we've got the bird. We've got the 
we've got the relationship between the different objects. Uh, the text should be in the corner. It isn't in the corner. This is the chameleon in a in a photo studio. I really like the way the light comes down from the top right hand corner, lights up the eyes. This is the kind of thing you can only do inside a, a photo studio. And everything just looks really photographic and uh, very high quality. So with this one, I think Dali 3 gets the price or gets the prize. Ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-